In this video, we're going to look at literary techniques that involve playing around with structure and syntax to create deeper meanings or to accentuate the soundscape of a poem. Juxtaposition By placing two words or ideas next to one another, we can highlight the differences between them. Juxtaposition can be used on a small scale between words or images or on a large scale between two characters or storylines. The effect can be funny or dramatic depending on how it's used. A huge lion covering in fear the sight of a tiny mouse is a silly image. A grandmother holding a newborn baby might be a very powerful image because it juxtaposes the concepts of birth and death or youth and old age. Many proverbs in English include examples of juxtaposition as the contrast between these concepts can provide a lesson. For example, we say all is fair in love and war. Love and war are opposites and yet this proverb shows that they have one thing in common which is that anything goes. This juxtaposition demonstrates that there are there is more alike between the concepts of love and war than one might originally think. Take a look at these two examples. One is a rap by Jay-Z and the other is a dialogue from Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream. Can you identify the juxtapositions being used here? Anaphora is a rhetorical device that features repetition of a word or a phrase at the beginning of successive sentences, phrases or clauses. The opposite of this is epistrophe where the repetition of words or phrases is at the end of successive sentences. Both of these are an intentional and very specific type of repetition that can provide a rhythm to words and phrases. This can have a strong effect on an audience by appealing to their emotions, providing inspiration and motivation and even help with the memorability of a text. For example, Take a look at how the Christmas carol Santa Claus is Coming to Town uses anaphora and how the song Single Ladies by Beyonce uses the epistrophe to create emphasis. Inversion, also known as anastrophe, is a literary technique in which the normal order of words is reversed in order to achieve a particular effect of emphasis or meter. Inversion uh, is achieved by doing the following, placing an adjective after the noun that it qualifies. For example, the soldier strong, placing a verb before its subject, example, shouts the policeman, or placing a noun before its preposition, example, worlds between. One of the most well-known characters who speaks the anastrophe is Yoda from Star Wars. When he wants to state that failure is the best teacher, he says, the greatest teacher failure is. Take a look at some of these other examples of anastrophe. Parataxis is a technique in which words, phrases, clauses or sentences are set next to each other so that each element is equally important. Julius Caesar's declaration, I came, I saw, I conquered, is an example of parataxis. Parataxis usually involve simple sentences or phrases whose relationships to one another are left to the reader to interpret. Uh, parataxis is used in poetry and prose and also in songs and advertising slogans because it makes it more memorable. You've all heard the tagline, maybe she's born with it, maybe, she's, it, maybe it's Maybelline. That's an example of parataxis in an advertising slogan. Let's take a look at some of these other examples of parataxis. Polysyndeton is a stylistic device in which several coordinating conjunctions are used in succession in order to achieve an artistic effect. For example, in I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings, Maya Angelou writes, let the white folks have their money and power and segregation and sarcasm and big houses and schools and lawns like carpets and books 
and mostly, mostly let them have their whiteness. So you see how the conjunction and has been used in rep repeating uh, instances to create that artistic effect. Polysyndeton is opposite to another stylistic device known as asyndeton. This is a device in literature and poetry to intentionally eliminate conjunctions between phrases and in sentences and yet maintain grammatical accuracy. This can be used in two ways. One is that it can be used between words and phrases within the same sentence. For example, in Julius Caesar, it says, Are all thy conquests, glories, triumphs, spoils shrunk to this little measure? So here you see all the conjunctions have been removed within the same sentence. Another exam another way to use a syndeton is between sentences or clauses. For example, without looking, without making a sound, without talking, as Sophocles writes in Oedipus and Colonus. Polysyndeton slows down the rhythm of speech, while asyndeton can be used to speed up the rhythm of speech. Apiciopesis. Now this seems like a tongue twister and it's definitely a mouthful, but it's actually quite simple. It is a rhetorical device in which the speaker or writer abruptly breaks off and leaves the statement incomplete. It is as if they are not willing to state what is present in their mind because they are overcome by passion, excitement or fear. This allows the ending to be filled in by the listener's imagination. And in order to show this in a sentence, one may use the M dash or the ellipsis. While it is most, used, most often used in prose and dialogue writing, I think it lends itself very well to contemporary poetry. We use this in everyday life too. We say, don't go there or else, dot, dot, dot. Or we say, how could you? And we leave it at that. Let's take a look at some of these examples from literature. Polyptotin. Now this is a figure of speech that involves the repetition of words derived from the same root, such as blood and bleed. Or for example, the question, who shall watch the watchman? Because it includes both watch and watchmen, which are derived from the same root word. Depending on the context of how it's used, Polyptotin can offer writers a variety of different e effects, emphasis, contrast, change, or connection. For example, in The Dry Salvages, T.S. Eliot writes, There is no end of it, the voiceless wailing, no end to the withering of withered flowers. Or perhaps the very iconic, Love is not love, which alters where it alteration finds, or bends with the remover to remove. So you see here how alters and alteration and remover and remove are used in quick succession um, and these are words which come from the same root word.